Shines like the sun in all of us spirits. 
Come on, you guys can do better than how are we doing? Yeah. Amen, amen. So my name is Chris Lamo, and I help lead the team ministry here in Riverside. Oh, yeah. And in Psalm 34, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And today, we're definitely going to be tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, because today is our annual Harvest Festival. All right, for those of you who don't know what this Harvest Festival is, is once a year our church put, puts together this festival to be able to serve our community. There will be games. We have a mechanical bull today, a jumper, all sorts of food. We have caramel apples. We have soul food. We have nachos. It's going to be an awesome time for us to taste and see that God is good. Amen. So, and what I love about this church, though, is just the fellowship. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we put together this harvest festival is obviously, yes, we want to serve the community. Um, but also we want to build this family uh, family relationship and this family feel within our church and to really show the community what uh, what Jesus and uh, his ministry and, and what the church is all about. Amen. Uh, but today, we're, again, we're going to have an awesome, awesome service plan. We're going to hear Sergio preach the word today. Um, and also, yesterday was his birthday, so please uh, give him some extra encouragement today. I know he's been working hard uh, to serve us today at this Harvest Festival. Um, before we continue worshiping God, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for today. I'm just so grateful. I'm so excited um, for what today holds. I'm really excited to be able to, to eat good food, um, to be able to have a lot of fun, and to really um, just be in the fellowship. God, I know that this week can be um, was really hard for me. There's all this different stuff on my mind and stuff. I know a lot of us have uh, different things at work or in our families, and I'm just really excited to be here and to get away from the craziness of the world and uh, to have fun um, in your kingdom, Father God. I love you, God, so much, and I pray this on your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. Go ahead and stand on up. We're going to sing one of my favorite songs. My soul. Now 
Thank you, thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I may look a little different. Yeah. What is it? What do you think? The goatee? You know, change, I knew change was in the air. I'm sporting the goatee, and then I showed up, and Jake May is completely shaved. He's got nothing on. You won't even recognize him. I almost, I'm like, who is this guy hugging me? Uh, and then, uh, and Sam decided to do the, the full Don Johnson, and he's half shaven. I think, kind of, all right. He didn't want me to mention that. So, Sergio, you're next. I'm not sure what you're going to do. But, uh, but the change is definitely in the air. Of course, it's because we have the Fall Festival. Amen. You guys excited about that, the Fall Festival? Super Pump's going to be exciting. We're going to have a great time. And uh, so we are changing the service up a little bit. We're going to have the offering first. And the communion is going to be with, uh, with Sarah Jo's message a little bit later. So we're doing the offering now. Um, but the reason why I get this go, I get to do it whenever I'm on vacation. At my work, I have to shave it. I have to be clean shaven. Uh, so I went on, uh, my wife and I uh, spent our 20th anniversary on a road trip. So we had our anniversary, a vacation. It was nice. Um, and uh, it, it, it was exciting. I, I really wanted to go see the Grand Canyon, which I've never done before. And she wanted to go see... Um, Magnolia Silos. You guys ever heard of that before? I had not before this trip, but I, it's all the way in Waco, Texas. So it was a good trip. And we saw the Magnolia Silos, and my wife is, uh, is happy. Of course, she should be. Let's go ahead and open up our Bibles to Deuteronomy 6. <laughs> she should be. She saw her. <laughs> not that because you were with me, just that you saw her. But we had a great time. It was a nice trip. Deuteronomy 6, I'm reading out of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Uh, it's not much different than anything else, so whatever you have, I'm sure it's fine. And in verse 4, this is what I was reading on our trip, and it really, uh, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It says, listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. These words that I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Bind them as a sign in your hand. Let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And I love that. I'm like, wow, we need to constantly be talking about God's word with our children, with our spouses, with one another, our neighbors. Everything should be in every part of our life. And so I, I, I thought I had a great idea last night. I said, well, I want to talk to my family about, you know, what I want to be talking about this morning. And I forget that every time I do that, it usually ends up, I have to change everything I'm going to talk about. What I want them to say is, Dad, husband, you're awesome. What you're about to say is awesome. Not that it's me, but it's the scriptures. But go ahead. Whatever you're about to say is great. Go with it. It's good. But it doesn't, ha in fact, I don't know if it ever happens. And I should know this by now. I should just not even say anything, right? I was like, well, I want to talk about the scriptures. So I ask, you know, you know, what I should talk about. I already had a plan. And uh, Alana says, well, it is the fall festival, so maybe you should not be so serious. Because I was going to talk about the Levites and tithing and all that. And I'm like, okay, so not so serious. Got it. Well, I guess apparently I'm too serious sometimes. And uh, my wife says, um, after listening to what I had to say, she was like, well, that's great, but why don't you put your heart into it? I was like, wow, that's, that's rough, man. It's a rough night. So... Uh, so I, I kept trying to make it work, and about 11.30 last night, I'm like, yeah, it's not going to work. I kind of had to change everything, so nothing what we're talking about today is what I had planned. So, so not serious and with heart. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do as we continue to read in Deuteronomy. And that's what we're thinking about contribution. It should be about our heart, right? We're giving our heart away. So let's go ahead and read the second part of uh, a Deuteronomy that I had planned. And obviously in Deuteronomy 8 talks about God gives us the ability to create wealth. But in verse 10 of chapter 6, it says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give you a land with large and beautiful cities that you did not build, houses full of every good thing that you did not fill them with, wells dug that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you eat and are satisfied, be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. And I, and I think, and as I was thinking about the last night in my bed, just what God has done for me. You know, I have an incredible wife of 20 years, 
You know, I have a, a beautiful family. I have an incredible church family. So much God has done for me. And I think that's what he wants us to have. He wants us to have that heart when we're given our offering, our contribution, that a heart of gratitude, not to forget him as we give. So let's do that at this time. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. I pray that we do give our offering with grateful and faithful and sincere hearts, Father, remembering all the good things you've given to us. Uh, truly, there, there's too many to, to count, and as we, even if we think and write things down, all the good things you've given us, Father, I, I don't know um, if we do, we'd probably run out of pages before we finish what we're, what all good things you've given us, Father, and talk about your love and your and your grace. Thank you so much for allowing us to give a little bit back to you, Father. We pray we give out of uh, grateful hearts and remembering um, what you've done for us. Thank you for allowing us uh, to be together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right. Well, welcome, church. I hope you guys are doing well this morning. Well, before we start, uh, I was asked uh, to uh, put out a prayer request. Um, Rebecca Beach's mom, uh, Rosa Kuna, uh, has been in the hospital for kidney failure and pneumonia. And uh, definitely we want to be praying for her. So let's go ahead and pray for her uh, at this moment. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together and worship you. Uh, at this time, Lord, uh, prayer has been presented before us. Uh, we want to bring before you Rosa Kuna. Uh, she's in the hospital right now, and uh, she's suffering from kidney failure and pneumonia. Uh, we pray that you be with Rebecca and her whole family, that you be with uh, Rose, uh, and, and that you help her to heal. Be with the doctors that are helping her, and Lord, please watch over her. Uh, please bring comfort to the whole family as well during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, this morning as I was driving here, uh, I realized a couple of things. Uh, one, I'm not Steve Perry. You guys know who Steve Perry is? Steve Perry was the lead singer of Journey, and he has an incredible voice, and so I'm playing one of his songs. I have Bluetooth on my hearing aids. So I was blasting it on my hearing aids. And I thought, surely, if I could hear the sound in my ears, the same type of sound is going to come out of my voice. And that was not the case. Yeah, you know what? I do have a mean falsetto, because when I do sing to the Bee Gees, it's, it's a lot closer. It sounds really good, I think. All right. So this morning, we're going to talk about the beauty that is the church. You know, you look around, we make up the church. And, you know, perhaps individually we're not that cute. We're not that good looking, perhaps. Some of us are, some of us not so much. But together, we make something awesome. Together, the church is beautiful. You know, I love coming here to gather with everybody on Sunday. I love coming together on Wednesday. I love coming together just to watch a baseball game. Go Dodgers, right? Now, you know who's not that beautiful? Red Sox fans. But you are welcome to worship with us too, though. I hope, I hope you're not offended. Now, to many people, this is what the church is, right? church buildings, that's the Crystal Cathedral right there, and that's, uh, uh, I believe, uh, Salisbury Cathedral uh, on the left. And we look at that, and I think growing up, this is what we think of as church, right? I'm going to go to church. That means you're going to go to a church building, and we look at the beauty, you know, the architectural design, you know, and it's appealing, but I tell you what, a building is cold. A building does not define church. You know what church is? This is what church is right there. You know, some of us feel like the guy on the right right there when we're being hugged by somebody. You know, maybe, maybe you've been hugged by a bunch of people and you're just visiting and, you know, you're feeling like that guy. Or maybe you're like on the left, you just, you're a hugger and you love church. But I feel very loved when I come and gather with the church. And again, that's not the church building. That is God's family. Church is not a place you go to. It's a family you belong to. So I hope this morning, if you're visiting with us, that is what you feel. Church is about people. It's about family. It's about the bonds that we have with the people of God. Now, that's made up of imperfect people. Very much. But we're trying to please God. And I hope that you feel welcome this morning. I know that you're looking forward, perhaps, to the great soul food that we're going to have, the nachos, the tacos, like riding on the mechanical bull. The bouncer is not for the adults. I want you to know right now. You could ride the mechanical bull. You could go on the rock wall. We're going to have a rock wall. You could kick the soccer ball into my likeness that you'll see out there. You can have all fun, all sorts of fun. There's even goldfish for you to take home with your kids. We are not providing the bowl. We are providing a little, you know, Tupperware container. So you will have to go to the pet store to get the bowl and to get some oxygen for your fish. Now, point number one. 
you belong here. You, know, you see that little puzzle piece there? How many of you have put together, I, I want to see how many of you have, uh, you know, had some achievements in your life. Over 100 piece puzzle. How many of you have done over 100 piece? How about over five, or 500 or over? Yeah, we've done those at our house. I, I don't like those. Okay, 1,000 or over. 1,500 or over. 2,000 or over. Wow. 2,500 or over. We have one, two, three. 3,000 or over. Roy? And who is it? What's your name? Okay. 3,500 or over. 4,000. 5,000 or over. You're down. You're done. You won. All right. Give it up for Roy. Oh, we have somebody in the back over there. Okay. 5,500. 5,000. 5,000. All right. We have a tie. Now. Did you finish it? Yes? Did you finish it, Roy? Okay. Now, wouldn't it be terrible if you were missing one piece? That would be a disaster, right? And you know what happens when you're missing one piece to the puzzle? You look at the dog. And you're like, what have you done? And you got to chase the dog around outside and try to find that piece. No, I hope not. That little digested piece, I don't know. But I remember doing like 50 or 100 piece puzzles because that's more my cup of tea. And you have a piece, you know, and you look at it and you just can't quite make it out but then you try to force it into a space because it seems like it has that shape and you're just like pounding it. You're like, go, right? And it kind of fits, but not, not really. And then you pull it out and you know, it's kind of oblong now, it's all messed up. You know, the world and Satan wants us to fit into the world, kind of force us to fit. And we get kind of bent out of shape and all messed up because we don't belong in the world. You know, God had a purpose for us to fit right here. This is where we belong. We belong with the family of God. You belong here. This may be your very first time, but I tell you what, fitting anywhere else but here is forced. It's just trying to pound yourself into something where God has not meant for you to be. This is where God wants you. This is where you belong. You belong here. In Ephesians chapter 2, read with me, verses 11 through 22. If you have your Bible or electronic device, turn there with me. It says, Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done by the body, in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you once were far away, you who once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. 
So we had the Gentiles, you know, who most of us are a part of. Sam is not. Sam, Sam, Sam was born a Jew. But, and then we have the Jews, right? And, and Christ came to take away the division that existed. You know, the conflict that existed between them spiritually. He came to take that away, to unite the two, because God hates division. He wants us to belong. He wants us to be unified. You know, and he says that, you know, Jesus is the chief cornerstone in this building. And, and we are the building that's being joined together to become a holy temple in the Lord. We are part of that. He's saying, okay, this is kind of like a 3D puzzle, a building. And every single one of us is a piece of it. See, you are a piece of that. And you belong here. You belong as God's people. You belong as the building that, that Christ is trying to create something holy, something awesome, something incredible that the world could look at, kind of like those church buildings that you look at and say, wow, that, that's beautiful. But we are a living building. We're something incredible that the world could look at and say, that truly is the church right there. That is something that God has put together. And if God has put it together, it's more beautiful than anything man could put together. You know, without you, when a piece is missing from a puzzle, it's just not right. Something is not right. And you belong here. You're meant to be part of this. Without you, this cannot be as beautiful as God wants it to be. You know, whatever issues you may have, whatever problems you may be going through, you know, whatever struggles you have, whatever sin you have been involved in, you belong here. None of us are perfect. We have so many issues. You know, and, and hopefully when we come together, you know, into this building that God has created, which is the church. You know, this dwelling which is created by God's spirit in which his spirit lives. Hopefully you have that little smile on your face. Knowing that you don't belong anywhere else. But you do belong here. You know, I know that even sometimes, perhaps you may come on a Sunday or on a Wednesday or to a fellowship or to get together, and the world has kind of crept back into your heart. You try to fit into what the world has for you, into the mold of the world. And you may feel like, man, I don't, I don't belong with God's people. You know, I'm not worthy. You know, I, I'm a mess. You know, Jesus died. For that because we could never measure up you know but God loves us so so much that he made his kingdom for us you know God wants to live among us he wants us to be unified as a family he wants us to know that we belong that we don't belong anywhere else whatever you may be going through other people here have gone through it too People could relate to you. You're going through financial challenges, health challenges. You know, maybe you're struggling with some mental health issues. Maybe you're struggling with your family, with your physical family. Maybe you're struggling at your job. Maybe you're unemployed. Maybe you're having car issues. Maybe you have all sorts of self-esteem issues. People could relate. And people want to embrace you. You know, may, maybe you don't look like one of those pieces there. Maybe your edges are pretty jagged. But there's a place for you where you fit right in. And it's here. You belong here. I hope that when you come here, you don't feel judged. You don't feel looked down upon. Because we're, we're all a mess. We're all a work in progress. You know, but together, we belong. And God has made us into his family. We are family. You know, we don't all look the same. We don't all like the same things. You know, we all have perhaps different hobbies. Some of us like the Dodgers. Some of us like the Red Sox. Some of us like the Brewers. They did, they did terrible yesterday. You know, maybe you're liked. Nobody else has in the church, but we are family. We are connected by God, birthed by the Spirit. For those that have become Christians, you are birthed by the Spirit of God. Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 34. The 
It says there, then Jesus entered a house. And again, a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, he's out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. By that, he's driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. You know, and they think he's crazy. Who are my mother and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. You know, Jesus, I think, was trying to communicate very similarly what Ephesians chapter 2 communicated, that we are a family in God, that we are citizens of God's kingdom when we unite spiritually. And I don't think that in any way Jesus was trying to put down his physical family who were really, truly concerned about him. I mean, I, I think they truly believed that he was out of his mind. You know, here he is leading all sorts of people, you know, causing a commotion, being their spiritual leader, and they know him as the carpenter, you know, and he had just started his ministry. And, you know, I, I know that in, in their mind they remembered how he was birthed. But I, I don't think it had quite sunk in yet. And here he's doing amazing things. I think that they knew what it meant for them is that they were going to have to embrace the truth. That if they were going to be part of Jesus' family, it wasn't just going to be a blood thing. They had to truly turn themselves in spiritually. And again, Jesus loved his physical family. He wasn't downing them at all. But I think what he was trying to tell them is that there's a deeper way than blood that God wants us to be family by, and that's by the Spirit. God wants us to be unified by His Spirit. We are God's family. When we embrace God's will for us and are birthed by the Spirit of God. You know, truly become a disciple of Jesus. That's how we become part of the family. He looked at those seated in the circle around Him and He said, you guys are my family. You know, and you may feel this as I've experienced this too, that sometimes you feel closer to your spiritual family than your physical family. There are bonds that are like no other within the family of God. And he wants every single one of us to experience that. I, I have that with my mom, a tighter bond than I ever had before because she's a disciple of Jesus. She's part of God's family. You know, I have an incredible connection with my brother-in-law, who's a disciple of Jesus. Much, much tighter than I had before, and I've known him since I was 11 years old. You know, my stepfather and I, we were always at odds. I was kicked out of the house when I was 16 years old. We just did not get along. And then I became a disciple later on, and 15 years later, you know, after my mom praying for him and, and reading him scriptures, he, he finally became a disciple. And he said to me, you know, Sergio, you're, you're, you're no longer my stepson. You're my brother. You know, he was 82 years old. He said, you are my big brother. You know, I had been a Christian at that point 15 years. And I got to baptize him. And it was a tighter bond than I ever had with him before. It was a tighter bond with him than with my physical father. Because we were family spiritually. 
We experience something that the rest of the world doesn't experience, an openness in sharing what's on your heart, an openness of what's going on in your life that you just don't share with the world, that the world doesn't share with each other. And the world is hungering for what we have, for this type of family. You know, as they were saying that Jesus had an impure spirit and that he was out of his mind, it's because people did not comprehend the type of relationship that he had with God and the type of connection that he had with the disciples around him, within his spiritual family. They saw the miracles that he was doing and how he was turning people's lives completely upside down and that they would follow him. They thought, these guys are out of their minds. I think that some people would probably come in here, you know, that we're here on a Sunday morning where we could be, you know, somewhere else, sleeping in, watching football. I don't know. You know, I always bring up the swap meet. You might be at the swap meet. You might be, you know, at a buffet somewhere. At El Torito has a really good brunch. You guys ever go to that on Sunday? I don't get to go to it because we're here. But it's, it's still two, by the way, but we have the Harvest Festival. You know, people are involved in so much other stuff, and because we're not... People think you guys are out of your mind. You're crazy because they don't understand what we have. The specialness of what we have in this family. And hopefully you're not craving what the world has to offer. You know, we start craving what the world has to offer when we lose connection with God and with the family. If you ever struggle spiritually and you feel like maybe I just need to walk away, it's because you've lost connection with the Father and you've lost connection with other people within the family of God. And I want to tell you, we are family. We're going to go through our struggles. We're going to be ugly at times. Some of us for long periods of time. People are going to think we're crazy. But God wants us to be part of of this family. Guys, family has issues. Jesus' family had all sorts of issues. They weren't perfect. He was. You know, Jesus is perfect. We're not perfect. So when you come to church, you're not going to see a group of perfect people. You're going to see very imperfect people. And sometimes we're surprised by this, right? Brother so-and-so, could you believe he did not say hi to me? I went by him, you know, and I even looked over like this, and he saw me, and he did not say hi to me. Could you believe that? Right? And we think stuff like that. Well, did you bother to say hi to him or her? You know, I've had people come up to me many times throughout the 25 years I've been a Christian and say, I know you saw me, and you didn't say hi to me, bro. I have a big attitude with you. I'm like, really? I'm half deaf and half blind. <laughs> and I didn't say hi. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Please. You know, and, and I mean it. You know, I'm sorry. Please forgive me because I'm, I'm a wretch. I'm a mess. And maybe I have ignored you in the past. I don't know if that was, you know, on purpose or not. So maybe it was. I apologize. You know, and I'll give him a hug or whatever. Uh. But we're, we're a mess. We're imperfect people. we got to forgive each other. You know, in families, forgiveness and mercy are crucial if we're going to stay family, if we're going to stay right with one another. If we're not going to walk in here and one family sits over there and one family sits over here because we have issues. You know, when we lived in the southeast, churches had divisions. They had splits. Not, not in our family of churches, but churches had splits in the south. Because issues that the church family would not resolve. And they had, you know, those in one family went one way, those in one family went another way. The churches were not planted based on the need to go ahead and reach the lost. Churches were planted because of divisions that existed within families. Issues that were never resolved. Could you imagine? And this happens in the world, too, even between families. Maybe it's happened in your family, where one side of the family doesn't talk to the other. You know, because Aunt Josie, you know, did not put enough mayonnaise on the potato salad at a barbecue 
and wasn't having it from Aunt Marie who yelled at her, cursed at her, and so they don't talk anymore. And there's these huge divisions. You know, or you get a phone call from one member of the family gossiping about the other one. Could you believe what she said? You know, and, and, and we're like, tell me more. <laughs> and families are divided over that, and God doesn't want us to be divided. He wants us to be completely unified. You know, if you have an issue with Sam, don't bring it up to me. Bring it up to him. And say, Sam, I didn't like your potato salad today. <laughs> Sam, the way you said that on stage, you know, I, it really rubbed me the wrong way. But at the same time, stop being so critical and so easily offended. We get so offended. Right? I, I probably get at least four or five phone calls of people that I offend weekly. You know, and if I haven't gotten to you yet, please be patient. I will, I will offend you. Just give it time. But we're family. God called us to be family. And we're going to have all these different things come up. We're imperfect. You know, the church, in the church, we hurt one another. You know, it should not be a surprise. You know who has hurt Jesus the most? The church. We hurt Jesus all the time, yet he hasn't abandoned us or left us. Right? So we shouldn't abandon one another. We shouldn't abandon the family that we are, the family that Jesus created. And his motivation, Jesus' motivation to continue to draw people to him and not leave while his family was wanting to talk to him outside. His motivation was the deep love that he had for God and for others. I hope that you love God the same way to embrace his family. I hope that you love one another so much that you're willing to overlook offenses and imperfections and work through them and be able to love one another and embrace one another and say, you are my family. I love you despite your offenses, despite your ugliness, despite whatever we've been through. And you know what happens when you do that? All these offenses, all these criticalness, all, all, all these issues that we have, they make, you, they make you stronger. They bind you even tighter because you've been to war with one another and you've survived it. And you know what else? Jesus died for this. This is what Jesus died for. And he died for us. He died because he wants us to belong. He died because he wants us to be family. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 13 through 21, we're going to close out here. It says, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. So here's, you know, here's that theme again, being out of our minds. For Christ's love compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all. And therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. Did I already read that? No. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know, as Paul is writing this, you know, he's telling the church, you know what motivates me, what compels me, and what compels us is Christ's love. You know, not, not that we love Christ, and I hope we do, but that Christ's love, him giving himself up on the cross so that we could have this family, 
so that we could belong. That's what, that's what compelled him. And that's what compelled the church. And that's what should compel us. The great love that God had for us to send Jesus to die on the cross for us. What should compel you to be here and embrace the family? What should compel you to belong to something so awesome as this? You know, and not have to be, come on, be here. Why aren't you here? You know, if somebody has to call you on a regular basis on, on why you're not here or why you should be here, you know, they're, they're trying to force you here or you're trying to force yourself here, it, it's because you're not really convinced of the love that God has for you. That's not what's compelling you. Hopefully it's not duty that compels you. But Christ's love. Christ died so that we could have this. You know, when I was growing up, um, my parents divorced when I was two. And my mom worked her tail off so that we could eat, that we could have a home, that we could have a place to feel safe, you know, that I could go to school. And she busted her tail day in and day out. And I love my mom so much. Not only because she loves me, but because of the sacrifices that she made for me. I saw her as, and I still do, as the best mom in the world. And because of that, you know, I'm compelled to be the best son that I could be for her. You know, to love her, to serve her, to give to her. And there's nothing that she could ask of me that I feel like, well, that's too much right there. You know, don't ask me to do that. How much more, God? How much has God done for us? He gave his son to die for us so that we could have this. So when he asked for us to commit to him wholeheartedly, when he calls us to belong, when he calls us to be his family, how much more should we be willing to go all the way with what he asked us? What God, whatever you need, this is what Jesus died for. Jesus died for you, that you could belong, and that you could be part of his family. Our only response to him is to turn ourselves completely in, completely over to him, to be part of his church. Not the building, not just to attend, but to be part of his awesome family. Not perfect, but loving and welcoming, and forgiving, and full of mercy, and grace, and love, and hopefully peace, where we could embrace one another and be a shining light to the world of what church truly is. Truly, you guys are the beauty that is the church. Let's pray at this time for our communion. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son Jesus, who died on the cross for us, that we could have something so amazing as the church, that we could belong, Lord. I know you've called us to belong here, looking at the world, God, and trying to force ourselves into the likeness of, you know, the different things that we see out there, whether it's somebody famous and rich or somebody just worldly given into sin. God, we don't want to be part of that. We want to belong here. God, help us to, in our heart, be grateful for what you've done. Really embrace the cross ourselves and die to our sin. Die to our sinful self that we could be part of your glorious and amazing family. I pray that as we take the bread and the cup, we remember the sacrifice that you made for us and how deeply you've loved us and that this is what compels us, that this is what motivates us daily to be the people that we are. God, help us be those ambassadors of Christ and the glorious church that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring our service to a close here, but I want to uh, give a little response on Sergio's message. You know, I don't think I've ever uh, been the butt of so many jokes from the pulpit before, but that's family. I feel like that's Sergio and Jeff calling me family, and I feel loved by that. A little hurt some... No, I'm just kidding, but... You know, as Sergio was talking in, in the first part there, you know, he's explaining the puzzle piece that sometimes we can get to try to fit, and we, and we squeeze it in, and we can jack it up and break it, and that's how we can try to fit into the world, that we feel like we've got to become something and, and change who we are, and, and we warp all these parts of ourselves to feel like we belong. You know, I remember my freshman year at high school, I tried out for the football team, and I tried to play wide receiver, and they told me, you know what, you're just too skinny. I used to have that problem. <laughs> and then I tried out for the soccer team, and they said, you're not fast enough. I said, well, okay, that's, I can work on that, maybe. I tried out for the volleyball team. They said, you don't jump high enough. I said, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm sorry. But even as I try to fit in with groups of friends and the people around me are wanting to be accepted, I feel like there was always something wrong with me, something I had to change in order to feel accepted. I don't know if you guys have ever felt similar with the world, and I think that's because the world tells you what you need to become in order to belong. But with God, and what Sergio displayed for us today, with God and his family, he tells you what you're going to become because you belong. And I think that's, that's an incredible power that we can't take for granted amongst God's family. You know, if you're visiting with us today, our hope, our desire, our prayer is that you're able to find that here. You're able to find authentic and real connections that are going to help you connect with God. They're going to show you where you belong. That's even why we're doing the Harvest Festival today. It's not because we like to just do a bunch of random things. It's because we celebrate family amongst God's people, and I hope you're able to find that. And if you've been around a while, you've been around the church, I pray you never take God's family for granted. Yeah. I pray you never take the things he's provided you with, the resource, the connection, the guidance, the relatability, the relationships, I pray you never take those things for granted. In fact, I desire for us as a church to want to give to our family, to want to make it bigger and better to glorify God. So I really appreciate this, Sergio. Let's give Sergio a round of applause. Right after his birthday, preaching the word in his youth. I love it. Speaking of making our family bigger and better, uh, the campus ministry, we just had a baptism on Thursday. And I want to welcome Kaylin Hudson to the family. Go ahead and stand up for us, Kaylin. Say hi to everybody. This is your family. Welcome to the family. Great to have her. It was very encouraging. I uh, did want to make an, a couple announcements before we uh, begin our festivities for today. Uh, next Sunday, the church will be back here uh, for church service, and Rancho will join us as we've been doing uh, for a while now. But the campus ministry will not be here next Sunday because we will be at our annual fall retreat in Anaheim. And so we got a few students going to that, not everybody apparently, but we're excited for that. Okay, I want to give some direction uh, for the Harvest Festival. We're about to uh, get popping right now. Uh, parents, please watch your kids, okay? It's not one giant daycare facility out there. We want to have a lot of fun, and we want to connect, uh, but we do want you to make sure you're watching your kids because there are some, you know, equipment out there that it could be a little, there's a mechanical bull and a rock climbing wall. Uh, so please watch your kids. Maybe you can help them get their food so their plates don't look like, Mount Everest as they walk away from the food table, uh, but just help them out there a little bit. And then uh, for the bull riding and the mountain wall, there will be wa uh, waivers to be signed. And if you'd like to participate in that, uh, which we are all welcome to do, just know you have to sign a waiver, as well as minors, your parents have to sign a waiver uh, for you. But this is going to be an incredible time. I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer uh, for the food, and then we're going to stand in, uh, for one final song. Let's go ahead and pray. God, I just want to thank you uh, for the family you've provided for us. And, and I, I really appreciate what Sergio talked about, that none of this would be possible if it wasn't for this sacrifice your son made for us on the cross. And just knowing that Jesus was willing to do this because he so badly desired us to have a connection with you. 
And not only with you, but with a bunch of people, a bunch of imperfect people that want to know a perfect God. And God, I pray as we leave today and we go hang out over at the Harvest Festival that, that we're able to really, uh, really soak up the blessings, really harvest the blessings that come with following you, the family that we're able to have in you. I pray that the, for those who are visiting, maybe for the first time or they've been around for a little bit, God, that they can find something genuine, something real through people whose hearts uh, desire to be with you with everything they've got. Thank you for this time, God. I want to pray for the food, and then we have a bunch of fun. It's your son's name I pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand on up for a final song. efforts uh, during the storms and uh, parents I want to encourage you to get your kids now don't stay up here in fellowship go ahead and get them that way the teachers could have their fellowship outside as well so get your kids now you are dismissed thank you <laughs>